um, essentially we're running two pumps um, two two speed five horsepower they're the executive 56 series pumps which we offer um, they're all made in the USA and two inch fittings inlet and outlet um, using a jacuzzi filter that I had I used to be in the hot tub business for years and years so this is all used stuff that I happen to have laying around that I'm using on this tub so a lot of the pipe looks kind of crummy it's because it's used um, I'm just reusing it so anyhow things I want to kind of show you what we're doing is if you notice on my plumbing on my intake on my pump I split it and you always want to have a valve before and after so you can change the strainer and the filter so when you're plumbing that you know the hot tub those are a couple things to remember have a valve on your filter so you can shut it so we got two pumps one they can run together they can run single together there's 10 horsepower they're five horsepower each you can see five horsepower and five horsepower backwards upside down but uh anyhow it's 10 horsepower so these things kick um we got a two horsepower air mariah air blower blowing air into the jets so all together is like uh 12 horsepower pumping into this hot tub so it's good action um like i said i do this for a living i did for many years it looks kind of like an octopus um so this is probably going to be way more complicated than your average Joe Blow who's going to put five or six jets in his hot tub. But that's what I did. I even got jets in the floor for massaging your feet. Now, some things to remember. There's a suction line right there in the middle. There's suction lines over in the corner and more suction over there. You want to have plenty of suction. There's more suction down there. Plenty of suction um, to make the pumps run right. You can't have 20 jets and one, 20 outlets and one inlet. And it don't work that way. So you want to try to spread your jets out as much as possible. It, the more water you can circulate through your tub, the easier, the cleaner it will stay. Um, I recommend staying away from chemicals, especially on a redwood hot tub. It'll eat it up. You can see this is nice and smooth. It'll just get stringy and just wear the tub right out. So this tub is in really, really good shape. It's about 20 years old. Um, so anyhow, I'm putting it back into service. And I'm going to kind of teach you some tips about redwood hot tubs and how to plumb them properly. Cool thing is, you set your family down. You can, uh, you know, tell them to point to the spots that hurt and where would they like their jets. Those are my jets over there. So I got one in my main back, one in my low back, one in both shoulder, and one in my neck. So I'm pretty messed up. My younger daughter, she's got three. And my wife's over here. She's got swirly jets that go around and around and around on her back. And then my other daughter's jets are over here. So what I got going on here is, you see the metal pipes coming out, and they go into the side of the hot tub. So I have two sources of heat. This unit here is something I came up with. Essentially what it is is a 50 gallon, 55 gallon drum that I modified and I put in um, some coils. Basically those two inch and a half pipes run straight through into the stove and through the top and then across and around. This is a propane fired um, Raypack spy heater. I think it's 50 some thousand BTUs or something, I'm not sure. Could be 100. Um, I've been so long I don't even remember what it is. But anyhow, i um, pretty sure it's like 55,000 BTUs. And it's a boiler. Um, it runs on propane and it is plumbed into the hot tub 
So if I don't feel like loading wood or I go on vacation, it'll fire itself, keep itself warm. Um, there's going to be freeze protection. There already is. There's a freeze protector wired up. A probe goes in to a fitting in this pipe, which is the furthest part away from the hot tub next to the wall. And it will be reading the water that's actually going into the boiler. And so when that water gets to whatever I tell it, 45 degrees or 60 degrees or 70, it will kick on and fire the boiler. So you'll have essentially all the radiant heat from the hot tub. This is going to be a insulated decking over here. Um, I'll kind of walk you through the process on how to deck it. But what I've been doing is changing the way the uh, um, plumbing works and making some changes, especially with the jets being high. Um, if the water gets low, it actually the jet opposite of you kind of hits you in the face. So um, I've totally changed the way the top jets are plumbed so I can control them so they're not quite as powerful. I've disconnected the air from them to put the air um, lower, the air that is injected into the jets um, will go into the tub a little lower. We've got jets in the bottom of this tub, so your feet actually get massaged. And I tried to engineer everything so it'll drain. Um, there's a couple drains there, and there's some other drains in various places. But the whole idea is when the tub, um, when you drain the water out of the tub, most of the water in the plumbing should drain out of the pipes. So if you ever have to shut this thing down in the wintertime, you don't have to worry about things freezing. So when this thing was originally put in, I've actually um, used this tub with a three inch um, trash pump. Um, I've used a inch and a half um, fire pump to power it before we were on grid. Um, you know, the thing that you have to realize is if you put a hot tub in um, and you run jets, like we got two five horsepower jets, you're going to be pulling a lot of power. So to do that on solar or alternative energy is pretty hard. You'll have to run your generator unless you have a huge bank. Um, so and then as much as a tub runs, these things need to run at least, I recommend at least six hours a day for the filtration and the uh, purification systems to work. I don't like using chemicals. So I use ultraviolet um, UV light. I use ozone injection. I also use copper and silver ions and then hydrogen peroxide. Um, hydrogen peroxide is about the only chemical that I add to the water and that boosts the oxygen level in the water and kills a lot of things as well. So, um, But anyhow, you have to run your tub quite a bit. If you wanted to, um, you could just actually just hook up a boiler and just heat the tub and then you got a hot tub no jets um, you could have a little gas pump that you could fire up to run when you wanted to run your jets lots of ways to do it if if you're out in the sticks uh, city guys I guess don't need to worry about that except when the power um, goes out so um, at that point I don't think you'd be worrying about sitting in your hot tub but uh, anyhow there's lots of benefits to understanding what I'm doing here, this is essentially a water storage tank. Uh, in an emergency, you need water. People don't realize how much water they go through, especially clean water. You guys have a blessed day, and more on this later.